It's the last 22 months and ends to three years of social Israel COVID-19 pandemic. Crypto Hong Group has once again successfully overcome the difficulties and turned the crisis into opportunity, just like what we did 20 years ago with SARS. In the fourth quarter, while the China domestic travel market was still overshadowed by pandemic resurgence in the fourth quarter, I'm delighted to see steady improvements in overseas markets. Overall, hotel bookings on our global platform have outperformed the pre-pandemic level for four consecutive quarters. On a constant currency basis, overall air ticketing revenue from our global platforms in Q4 has also fully recovered to the pre-pandemic level. Demand for China's outbound travel surged in Q4. Search for outbound flights departing from mainland China hit a three-year peak following the downgrade of COVID-19 to a Class B infectious disease and China's reopening in December. Such encouraging data reveals increasing consumer confidence in the travel industry globally again. Since the announcement of China's reopening, we have seen strong travel demands across our various business lines. Our domestic hotel bookings and air booking have already surpassed the 2019 level. Outbound travel bookings have recovered to more than 40% of pre-pandemic levels despite capacity limitation. While airlines not running international flights at a pre-pandemic level could be a short-term bottleneck, we believe China's outbound travel will start to pick up in Q2 when flight capacity gradually recovers. Europe and the U.S. have already been making good progress towards the post-pandemic recovery of global travel. This year, with China's fully reopened and the whole Asia Pacific region catching up rapidly, 2023 is projected to be an exciting year of recovery and growth. The future is bright. We are well prepared and remain committed to helping travelers explore even the furthest corners of the planet so to bring the world closer together. With that, I will turn the call over to Jane for the operational highlights. Thank you, James. Good morning, everyone. As a quick overview, in Q4, despite the outbreak of the pandemic, our total net revenue grew by 7% year over year. We saw steady improvements in our overseas businesses, which have outgrown the pre-pandemic level. For the full year of 2022, our total net revenue remained stable year over year. Our adjusted EBITDA stayed positive for the past three years, despite pandemic challenges. Thanks to our team's efforts, and our effective cost control and efficiency improvements. Now, I would like to share what we have seen in each region. First, in the China market. For China market, the fourth quarter of 2022 was the darkness before dawn, while domestic travel performance was soft in October and November due to viral resurgence and strict pandemic controlling measures. The announcement of dropping quarantine requirement and the reopening of country's border in December was the key turning point in China's travel recovery. Overall, despite China's domestic travel market being largely impacted by pandemic, we continue to adapt our strategy to outperform the market. Our same city vacation hotel bookings in this quarter grew by 10% above 2019 pre-COVID level and was 40% higher than the pre-pandemic level for the full year of 2022. Our domestic air ticketing booking was also recovering faster than the market. Quarter to date, we are glad to see that the long-haul travel bookings have strongly recovered and have already surpassed 2019 pre-COVID level, and the short-haul travel growth remains robust and has nearly doubled its 2019 pre-COVID level. With both long-haul and short-haul travel demands coming back, we anticipate our domestic business to remain on the strong growth trajectory for the rest of 2023. Second, outbound. China outbound travel has seen uh, the demand has been uh, robust, especially after the announcement of the border opening in December. In Q4, outbound air ticket bookings on Trip.com Group platform increased by over 200% year over year, and outbound hotel bookings increased by 140% year over year. Demand for outbound travel continued to surge in the first two quarters or uh, two months of 2023, with outbound travel bookings increased by more than 300% compared to the same period in 2022. Back in 2019, mainland China was the largest outbound travel market in the world, with Chinese travelers taking over more than 150 million trips overseas. We are pleased to see them gaining confidence in traveling and are eager to explore the world again after three years. Right now, the bottleneck lies in outbound flight capacity, which is currently only at 15 to 20 percent of pre-COVID level and is largely limiting the overall recovery pace of China's outbound travel. We anticipate that the aviation industry will set in motion plans to restore flight capacity 
and that outbound travel will pick up the pace in the coming quarters. Third, global markets. On the international front, the Europe and American markets continue to show steady improvements, while the opening up of the Asia region further accelerated the recovery in APAC market. For flight performance, the overall air ticket booking on our global platforms have achieved over 80% year-over-year growth. Air ticket bookings in EMEA and American market continue to show strong growth. The APAC region was also picking up the pace and growing at over 300% year-over-year. Over, on a consistent uh, currency basis, overall air ticket revenue from the global platform have already fully recovered to the pre-pandemic level. For hotel business, overall hotel bookings on our global platform hit a record high and was above pre-COVID level for four uh, consecutive quarters, with domestic hotel bookings in non-China market increased by 140% versus 2019. Now, I would like to give strategic highlights on the following items. First, accommodation. Over the past three years, we have built a strong use case in China on short haul and continue to remain at our advantage in long haul travel in order to serve our evolving needs for the customers and create value for our partners. We continue to press ahead with improvements in product coverage, innovation, inspiration, and the recommendation in the past quarter with the hotel market. We have seen hotels evolving into destination in themselves, with travelers emphasizing the quality of their accommodation. Package deals cover 70% more properties than 2021, and more than 7,000 high-end properties joining hands with us to help our customers to get the best value for money. Over 240,000 hotels also join our Trip Plus program to gain access and provide extra benefits on a high-quality royal customers. In Q4, over 50% of our trip plus reservation come from high-end hotels. In the low-tier city, we continue to leverage our gateway products to acquire new customers as we continue to strengthen our dynamic pricing strategy. Co-branded membership program also help expand our reach to over 30 million joint members, which is six times the number in 2019 pre-COVID level. Second, global business. We remain confident in our China customers' desire to venture overseas, especially with COVID fading away and the world embracing normalcy. We stayed focused on tightening connections with our international partners and strengthening engagement with our Chinese customers. As one of the very few companies invested heavily in global suppliers' relationships even during the pandemic period, we are well positioned to capture the strong pent-up demand for outbound travel. In addition to the resumption of China outbound travel, yet another great opportunity lies in the acceleration of travel recovery in APAC region. Strong propensity to travel is in the region provide a good opportunity for us to capture more bookings. While we conclude our year with the strong growth in international hotel and air ticket business, our overseas activity business has also delivered great performance with GMV increased by over 130% year over year. We will continue to source for unique offerings and localize our campaigns to gain trajectory for local demands while improving our competitiveness and service capability to win over the local mindset. Third, content platform. Following the reboot of the global travel activities, demand for inspirational destinations continue to increase. We are seeing customers coming to our platform not only to book air tickets or hotel room but also to get inspired for their next trip. In the fourth quarter, our content generation pipeline and the users' engagement capabilities continue to improve. The number of KOLs increased by 47% year over year in 2022. User-generated content also increased by 33% compared to the previous year. Average number of the content viewed per user also continued to increase. In line with our commitment to innovation, we have also launched our experimental AI chatbot, TripGen, on our Trip.com platform. TripGen is a generative AI chatbot integrated with our OpenAI API and is designed to provide travelers with live assistance and provide the most relevant and authentic travel recommendations to our customers. Fourth, corporate responsibility. While strengthening our capabilities to inspire and serve customers to explore the world, we remain committed to pushing forward with our corporate responsibility. First, common prosperity. 
Regarding our rural revitalization initiatives, our plan is to roll out 10 high-quality country retreats to empower 100 rural destinations and nurture 10,000 rural tourism talents within five years. Over the past year, 30 new trip.com country retreats were built, making a total of 21 country retreats currently in operation. Right now, 80% of the staff come from the local and their average income was increased by around 7,000 RMB per year. We are delighted to be able to empower the locals and help pursue the common prosperity. Second, on sustainability. We announced our long-term green tourism goals, which include launching over 10,000 low-carbon travel products, promoting sustainable travel, and engage 100 million travelers in carbon, low-carbon practices, and aiming to further reduce carbon emission across its operation to meet increased demand for sustainable travel options. Our Trip.com brand launched its carbon offset option for travelers to address their flight emission by supporting a portfolio of trusted high-impact climate projects in line with the UN Sustainability Development Goals. In October, Trip.com Group has officially joined the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, GSTS-TC, as a member to promote sustainable tourism standard in the travel and tourism sector. Finally, during the quarter, Chip.com was named Contact Center of the Year 2022 at the International Customer Relationship Excellence Awards and a champion for good in Singapore, demonstrating the recognition of our brand for its service excellence and a focus on local commitment. In conclusion, we are encouraged by our results and the recent strong recovery in the market. I would like to thank our team for their dedicated efforts in maintaining quality services during the past three years. As we look into the future, Trip.com Group looks forward to working more closely with our global partners across the global market to shape our products and services around the customer needs and the pursuit for value. Working together, we will be able to deliver memorable trips for travelers wherever they choose to explore and visit in 2023 and beyond. With that, I would now turn the call to Cindy. Uh, thanks, Jay. Good morning, everyone. For the fourth quarter of 2022, Trip.com Group reported a net revenue of RMB 5 billion, representing a 7% increase from the same period last year and a 27% decrease from the previous quarter, primarily due to viral resurgence and strict pandemic control in the China domestic market during the first two months of the quarter. For the full year of 2022, net revenue was RMB 20 billion, which remained stable year over year, mainly driven by recovery in the overseas market and partially offset by a soft performance in the China domestic market. Accommodation reservation revenue for the fourth quarter of 2022 was RMB 1.7 billion, representing a 12% decrease year over year and a 42% decrease quarter over quarter, recovering to 57% of the 2019 level. For the full year of 2022, accommodation reservation revenue was RMB 7.4 billion, representing a 9% decrease from the 2021. In the fourth quarter, the China domestic market was largely impacted by the viral resurgence and strict pandemic control and limiting the hotel business's performance. On the other hand, hotel booking on our international platforms remain robust and above the pre-COVID level. Transportation ticketing revenue for the fourth quarter of 2022 was RMB 2.2 billion, representing a 45% increase year over year and a 16% decrease quarter over quarter, recovering to 64% of the 2019 level. For the full year of 2022, transportation ticketing revenue was RMB 8.3 billion, representing a 20% increase from 2021. Domestic transportation recovery momentum was disrupted by the resurgence of COVID cases for the fourth quarter, while our international air saw the sequential improvement compared to the previous quarter, mainly driven by the steady improvement in the Europe and U.S. markets and the robust recovery in the Asia-Pacific markets. Package tour revenue for the fourth quarter of 2022 was RMB 164 million, representing a 7% decrease year over year and a 58% decrease quarter over quarter, recovering to 21% of the 2019 level. For the full year of 2022, package tour revenue was RMB 
797 million, representing a 28% decrease from 2021. Corporate travel revenue for the fourth quarter of 2022 was R&D $277 million, representing a 25% decrease year-over-year year and a 25% decrease quarter-over-quarter, quarter, recovering to 74% of the 2019 level. For the full year of 2022, corporate travel revenue was R&D $1.1 billion, representing a 20% decrease from 2021. Air ticketing bookings on our corporate travel platform was impacted by the pandemic control measures and the limited flight capacity, while accommodation booking continued to gain momentum despite pandemic challenges and was double the 2019 level. Excluding share-based compensation charges, our total adjusted operating expenses was 15% lower than the previous quarter and was a saving of 33% compared with the same period in 2019. For the full year of 2022, total adjusted operating expenses was 34% lower than the 2019 level. This reflects our effective cost control and efficient operating management across business lines. Adjusted product development expenses for the fourth quarter decreased by 16% from the previous quarter and was a saving of 20% compared with the same period in 2019. Adjusted GNA expenses for the fourth quarter remained flattish compared to the previous quarter and to the same period in 2019. For the full year of 2022, adjusted product development expenses and adjusted GNA expenses were 20% and 11% lower than the 2019 level, respectively. As we continued to, learn, to run lean and maintain a stable headcount, adjusted sales and marketing expenses for the fourth quarter decreased by 21% from the previous quarter and 55% compared with the same period of 2019. For the full year of 2022, adjusted sales and marketing expenses were 55% lower than the 2019 level, as we continue to stick with our stringent cost control protocol. Adjusted EBITDA was RMB 286 million for the fourth quarter, compared with RMB 54 million in the same period last year, and RMB 1.4 billion in the previous quarter. Adjusted EBITDA margin was 6% for the fourth quarter compared with 1% in the same period last year and 21% in the previous quarter. Diluted earnings per ordinary share and per ADS were RMB 3.12 or US dollar 45 cents for the fourth quarter of 2022 and RMB 2.14 or US dollar 31 cents for the full year of 2022. Excluding share-based compensation charges and fair value changes of equity securities investments and exchangeable senior notes, non-GAAP diluted earnings per ordinary share and per ADS were RMB 76 cents or US dollar 11 cents for the fourth quarter, and RMB 1.97 or US dollar 29 cents for the full year of 2022. As of December 31, 2022, the balance of cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash, short-term investment held to maturity time deposit and financial products was RMB 60 million billion or US dollar 8.6 billion. Now turning to the first quarter of 2023, we would like to share some colors of our business. Since the lifting of COVID related travel restrictions, China domestic travel market has seen very strong release of pent up demand in the first two months of 2023. With industry-level air passenger volume recovered to around 80% of 2019 level, and hotel rep costs fully recovered in recent weeks, the international flight capacity also recovered to 15 to 20% of the pre-pandemic level and continues to moving up. Quarter to date, we are glad to deliver strong results across our business lines. First, for our domestic hotel and air bookings have already surpassed the 2019 level. Second, our outbound travel bookings have grown by more than 300% compared to the same period last year. And our hotel and air ticketing bookings on our global platforms continues to grow by triple digits year over year. To conclude, the lifting of pandemic-related restrictions and reopening of country border have been an important driver to the recovery of global travel and our businesses. We, ac we acknowledge the uncertainty regarding potential looming new wave of COVID that may disrupt the recovery trend. However, 
we are confident in travelers' strong desire for travel and ability to handle challenges. We will keep the operation lean and continuously to enhance efficiency and invest to seize opportunities in the coming future. With that, operator, please open the line for questions. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, you need to press star 11 on your telephone. To cancel your request, please press star 11 again. Kindly limit your request to one question at each time. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. First questions, we have the line from Brian Kong from City. Please ask your question. Uh, good morning, James, James, Cindy, and Michelle. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, so uh, management just mentioned we have seen decent recovery for the investment in our business. So uh, just a wonder if management share uh, a bit more color and details on the performance for our domestic outbound and international platforms re respectively in recent weeks. Thank you. Hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, our performance for domestic outbound and also international are uh, very strong. Uh, for domestic business, we have already seen uh, hotel and air tickets surpassed pre-COVID level. Uh, for outbound business, uh, we have seen 300% quarter-to-date growth compared to last year, although uh, the air ticket uh, capacity has not fully recovered yet. Uh, thirdly, on the platform, uh, uh, for global platform, uh, we have seen three digits growth uh, in, in the regions. So we are confident that uh, we can work hard to capitalize the opportunity in 2023. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Next question is from the line of Alex Poon from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, management, on extremely strong results and year-to-date performance. Um, my okay. question is related to our expectation for rest of the year 2023. Will total revenue fully recovers to the pre-COVID level sometime this year? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, despite very uh, limited visibility due to comparatively short booking windows uh, uh, compared with the pre-COVID uh, period, we expect that the recovery momentum of the China domestic travel uh, will remain robust and that of the outbound travel will continuously to improve with increasing cross-border flight capacity in a healthy uh, macro environment. Uh, with regard to our international brands, uh, they are all on the right track to gain market share in respective markets, and we expect to maintain the growth momentum in this year. Uh, so in summary, we, uh, we were working very hard to make sure that we are going to continuously to gain market share, uh, both for the China market, uh, including China domestic and China outbound, as well as for the international market which will help us uh, help our revenue, uh, hopefully, to go almost back to the normalized level. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Our next question comes from Zhong Shao from Barclays. Please ask your question. Thank you very much uh, for taking my question, um, and congrats on the very strong result and outlook. My question is around Thank margins. You. Um, you, you have um, sort of uh, optimized your cost structure during the pandemic. Now the demand is recovering. Your top line is growing very fast. Um, but you also need to balance, keep the kind of cost efficiency, while investing enough to capture the growth. So I was wondering how you, how you balance that. And I remember uh, around pre-COVID, your OP margin was around 20%. And sort of how we should think about getting to that level or even exceeding that level uh, by end of the year. I think your longer term guidance on the margins is around 20 to 30%, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, we actually are very glad to see the efficiency improvement across brands and uh, business segments through the past three years. Uh, for example, the improvement of our back-end operating system allows us to maintain extensive coverage and active product innovations with a smaller size of product sourcing team. And also, our content strategy has contributed to higher user engagement and conversion rate, which also help us to improve the uh, marketing efficiencies. Um, yeah, in the, in the long run, um, uh, uh, of course, we don't take, for example, margin as a target, but uh, as a natural result of a healthy, more healthy business growth and disciplined cost control. And we believe the majority of our business segments are currently operating at better margin comparing to pre-COVID level uh, on an Apple-to-Apple -Apple basis. And we will benefit from better scalability and synergies uh, between our brands. And uh, we are very confident to achieve a healthy, um, uh, as we guided before, 20 to 30 percent level um, uh, healthy margin while driving, uh, driving very sustainable business growth in the future. Uh, however, in the, in the, in the very short term, the lag in outbound business recovery and increase the mix from international OTA business uh, will also, to some extent, uh, negatively impact the group's uh, branded margins. Uh, but uh, even for this year, uh, our team will, uh, will work uh, very uh, uh, hard uh, trying to uh, have a very healthy and fast growth and at the same time to maintain a healthy margin. Thank you for the questions. One Thank moment you. for the next questions. 
Next, we have the line from Alex Yao from J.P. Morgan. Please ask your question. Uh, thank you, management, for taking my question, and congrats on strong uh, demand recovery. Uh, I think it's uh, reasonable to assume that you guys will go through a period of a very strong pent-up demand recovery. Um, but how do you guys think about the growth strategy and the growth rate target uh, post the pent-up demand uh, period? For example, um, what's your growth strategy and growth target for 2024 and 2025? Uh, accordingly, how do you plan to um, uh, allocate a resource during the pent-up demand re- uh, period versus the normalized growth period? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, great talent, all the players in the travel industry, uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, the, it also makes uh, uh, Trip.com Group uh, a stronger company. Um, in terms of uh, growth drivers, uh, for the China domestic market, uh, firstly, we will continuously to expand our customer base, uh, especially in the lower-tier cities, which have a large growth potential from rapid urbanization. And meanwhile, we will focus on higher user engagement and stickiness which will translate into higher user spending and frequencies. Uh, for example, we drove higher cross-selling ratios from transportation to accommodation and other services and expanded the user case to cover more short-haul travel scenarios. Uh, in addition, our comprehensive content platform does not only provide users with <coughs> inspiration and planning, but also opens the door to travel advertisement opportunities, which is estimated to be over 90 billion RMB in 2019. Um, second, um, and most importantly is the outbound travel. Trip.com Group is one of the few companies that were able to maintain its engagement with both Chinese customers and international travel suppliers in the past three years. Uh, therefore, we are very well positioned to continuously to benefit from the strong pent-up demand for the outbound travel. Uh, for example, in the uh, recent uh, months, although the industry level, uh, for example, the air capacity is still at around recover to uh, 15 to 20 percent level, but our outbound travel business has have significantly outpaced the industry growth to going back to over 40% uh, compared with the uh, pre-pandemic. Um, third, um, for the international brands and international markets, uh, we have made significant progress in unifying our back-end operating systems, standardizing the international front-end products and aligning these services with our domestic standards. All these initiatives will help us to drive long-term synergy uh, among our international brands. And um, we are also very delighted to see the promotion of inbound travel being inscribed in China's 14th five-year plan. With our high-quality one-stop travel platform and user bases, we are confident to make great contributions to the country's inbound tourism uh, once it starts to gain uh, momentum. Um, So in in, in summary, uh, with these three uh, uh, drivers, uh, we think even in the long run, uh, we can uh, maintain and continue to have a very healthy uh, growth rate at a double digit, at least a double digit growth rate in the next couple of years. Thank you. The questions? Next up, we have a line from James Lee from Mizuho Group. Please ask your question. Great, thanks for taking my question. Now, give me the bottleneck on the flight capacity you guys lay out for outbound travel. How should we think about the shape of that recovery curve? And what are the top destinations you're currently seeing in your search results? Thank you. Mm, thanks, James. Uh, we have been in discussion with the airlines. Uh, they are doing their best to rip. To rip uh, revamp uh, the capacity. Uh, based on our discussion uh, right now, the capacity is uh, about 15 to 20 percent, and hopefully uh, by the end of June, we'll see about 50 percent recovery. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll uh, see pretty much uh, it's recovered to 80 to you know 90 percent of the capacity. Uh, and our team will be able to outpace uh, the market, as Cindy said. Right now, although uh, the out uh, Outbound capacity is only at 15 to 20 percent, but our volume already recovered to 40 percent of uh, pre-COVID level. So we are continuously working closely with our global partners to make sure we serve our outbound customers uh, with a strong product and service. Thank you. The questions. One moment for the next question. Next up, we have a line from Thomas Chong from Jeffries. Please ask your question. Hi, good morning. Thanks, management, for taking my question. Uh, I have a question regarding the accommodation uh, segment. Uh, can management comment about the accommodation pricing trend in the domestic market in Q1 and 2023? Are we seeing a similar situation like a U.S. and Europe market? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, for the domestic travel, average price may go slightly up when demand fully recovers to and surpass the pre-COVID level, uh, which may also be an offset by a potentially a higher mix from the lower end, uh, lower tier cities. Uh, we don't, therefore, we don't expect a huge surge in price in China because, firstly, the hotel and air supplies are still quite stable comparing to pre-COVID level. 
and overall coal price index in China uh, is still at low level. Um, but for the outbound travel business, the average air uh, 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 yeah the average air price is significantly higher due to flight capacity constraints, and we believe the price will decrease as the uh, is, uh, will decrease as supplier increases. Uh, um, and the average hotel price for our outbound travelers, uh, however, is still lower uh, than the pre-COVID level due to the imbalance to recover status among destinations. Of course, as you mentioned, uh, for the Western uh, Europe and uh, U.S. markets, the ADR increased quite significantly, while uh, for most of the triple Hong groups, the target customer, they are in the Asia-Pacific area uh, where the ADRs are still uh, uh, depressed uh, compared with the uh, pre-COVID level. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Next up, we have the line from Simon Cheung from Goldman Sachs. Please ask your question. Uh, hi, morning. Uh, thanks for the uh, presentation. Um, I, I got a, qu a quick question, just uh, again related to your comment about competitions. Uh, hearing that you, you're actually penetrating into the rural area and you have strategy going overseas, and perhaps can you uh, help to quantify it uh, with uh, all those comments, uh, with some numbers? And when you look, think, thinking about the uh, profit margin or the profitability of the respective business, i.e., the rural domestic uh, business alongside with the outbound uh, international business, how are we? How, how are they different, and uh, and also the trend uh, compared to historically? Thank you. Yeah, the the margins. Uh, and if you look at uh, if you look at our margin level uh, uh, in, for example, 2019, uh, the most profitable segment uh, uh, for sure is the outbound travel business, and the second one is our domestic uh, businesses. Um, and and the, uh, for the international uh, uh, part, uh, for example, our uh, Skyscanner business or the other uh, uh, well-established international brands, they also have a very healthy margins. Uh, but uh, for the triple com business, uh, it's still in the investing period and still have uh, some uh, losses. But uh, we, our team will work very hard uh, to drive the efficiencies of our uh, growth strategy for the triple com businesses. Um, in terms of the uh, lower tier uh, uh, cities or lower end of the market, yes, uh, during the pandemic, we've been very successful at gaining a lot of market share in the lower end of the uh, business. Um, uh, their total revenue contribution has uh, comparatively increased. Um, however, uh, for the margin profile of our domestic business, uh, we, uh, I think, uh, still the mid to high end uh, of the uh, uh, business or, or mid to high end of the customer base contribute most of our margins. Uh, and even after the, uh, uh, yeah, especially during the uh, pandemic, we've been very, uh, uh, working very hard to increase the efficiencies across all the business lines. I think after the pandemic, uh, we have the confidence to continuously to maintain these uh, uh, efficiencies. Uh, uh, also including the China domestic uh, business. So we don't think uh, the margin will be uh, 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 impacted uh, because of the revenue mix between the mid to low end to the, uh, to the high end. Because uh, not only from the mid to low end of the business we are getting market share, we also further strengthening our, uh, uh, market, share, our, uh, uh, our market share in the mid to high end of the hotel business. That is uh, very critical to our overall uh, margin profile in the future. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. We have another question from the line of Wei Xiong of UBS. Please go ahead. Um, good morning, management. Uh, congrats on a good quarter, and thank you for taking my question. Um, I want to follow up on competition from a different angle, um, as well as the, your content strategy. Um, so given the backdrop of very encouraging travel market recovery this year, I'm just wondering if we see any changes in the competitive dynamics from short video platforms, um, or do we anticipate potentially more competition in the travel market from new entrants? Um, and also related to that, could management update on the progress of our content strategy just to defend uh, our market, market position there? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it's quite natural because I think travel industry is one of the most attractive industry in the world. That's why uh, <laughs> we, we always uh, can see a lot of uh, players or potential players uh, trying to enter into this space. Uh, however, it, yeah, uh, we are very, as always, we are very confident uh, in the bright future uh, of this industry. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have uh, seen the contact platform pretty much focus on the location-based service and pre-sale uh, uh, products of which the overlap with our co-business at this moment is quite uh, limited. And of course, we, as always, we will closely monitor the market situ situation and will keep the investor updated. Um, but uh, uh, most importantly, we still think uh, we will remain very focused on developing uh, our core capabilities, uh, such as our strong product innovation and uh, service and uh, fulfillment capabilities, uh, so that we will make sure that we provide always uh, the most reliable services and frictionless customer experience uh, to the uh, customer. Um, yeah, and, uh, we, we are very fortunate to be in this uh, 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 promising industry, and uh, uh, as always, we will make sure we do the best uh, in the co-competence in this industry because we are the experts. Thank you. 
for the questions. One moment for the next question. Next up, we have the line from Joyce Chu from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, management. Uh, thank you for taking my question. My question is regarding the international business. Uh, could you actually help elaborate more about your strategy for Trip.com? Uh, when do you expect the business to be profitable? Uh, Trip.com is going, is going to take share from which global competitors? Uh, what are your key competitive advantages to gain share? Thanks. Mm. Yeah, Trip.com is uh, uh, gaining a lot of momentum. Uh, the strength for us is a couple. First of all, we provide one-stop shopping platform. Uh, so when you log on Trip.com, consumers will be able to find everything they need when they travel abroad. Secondly, the user's experience on APP uh, is very smooth. Uh, that is also uh, many years of uh, experience starting from Asia market. Thirdly, we also uh, focus a lot on customer service. Uh, we offer 24 hours uh, languages and um, timely response to our customers. Uh, and very lastly, I think utilizing our strengths from outbound, we'll also be able to uh, negotiate very good deals for uh, customers all over the world. Uh, so these are our strategy. It's an integrated uh, uh, a game plan uh, starting from Asia uh, to the rest of the world. Thank you. For the questions, next we have a line from Tian Ho from TH Capital. One moment, please. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning, management. Uh, I have a question related to the systematic AI. Uh, so uh, we're excited to see that the C-Trip has already launched a new AI uh, chatbot based on the technology of GPT. So can you share us some uh, information about the current status of your AI chatbot and also the potential applications you know, of such uh, tools to your business? You know, what, what's the potential? Thank you. Hmm. <clears throat> Our new... Uh AI uh, tripgen is uh, at very early exploratory uh, early stage. Uh, it mainly uh, has three functions. First of all, it enables our customers to find more relevant information faster and more efficient. Uh, secondly, we're able to link their search results to our existing products uh, more efficiently. And thirdly, it will also enable our service team to provide uh, better services. Uh, we are <clears throat> working very hard, uh, trying to improve our efficiency by utilizing the new technology, as always, uh, but it's still at an early stage. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. That concludes the Q&A session today. I would now like to hand the call back to Michelle Chi for closing remarks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. You can